Hello, and welcome to Get Yourself Optimized. I'm your host, Stefan Spencer, and it's my pleasure to have Corey Boutwell with us today. Corey has won numerous fitness competitions. He's a fitness model. He is a WBFF, World Beauty Fitness and Fashion Professional Athlete. He's the host of the Corey Boutwell podcast, a coach to entrepreneurs, and an expert on getting men to activate their alpha. Corey, it's so great to have you on the show. Oh, thanks for having me on, Stefan. So let's talk about what it takes to get your body into such a shape that you can be a fitness model, you can be a, a winner of different competitions and you know, a, a, attract your um, uh, soulmate or attract the opposite sex or whatever and uh, w without effort. <laughs> <laughs> Without effort would 100% be extremely nice. But, um, well, essentially, I think a few people can relate. I think a lot of um, men in particularly, if they are at a sort of position in their life where they've, I, I kind of think that every single male, when, you, when you're a kid, especially, you watch comic books, you see TV shows, you see movies, and you see, like, heroes. And you just see that the, the power, the confidence, the, the challenges that they're overcoming, and what comes with that is how they look. And ever since I was a little kid, I was looked up to heroes and wanted to follow heroes and wanted, wanted to be like a hero. And I sort of just knew like, okay, well, one day I'm going to do like whatever it takes to, to get a body to look like one of those so that I could step into the identity of someone who is like a hero. And what it really takes in like a really short, simple answer, which is the hardest part, which people don't understand because I've done this naturally without steroids, without performance en enhancements. And I've had like a body that I've been very proud of for like up to 10, tw up to 10 years, I'd say um, 10 years. And like, I'm only 28. So I've been, I've been um, blessed with, I would say the opportunity to stay consistent with training and that's really the key the hard part is is understanding when things get painful and when like you know you you you, you do you, you want to find a girl and you want to be attractive so 100 percent, a body is going to help with that it, it is one thing that definitely lures people in but it's not everything <laughs> i learned that growing up you think like oh get a body or get all the girls it's like nope <laughs> not at first um so that is definitely one motivation if you are you know sort of at a state where you you're you don't have too much energy or you, you get down on yourself and you want to have more confidence it extremely helps and also it really helps if you have a business or or just for personal development depending on how you look at how you train because it creates discipline it takes long time and you have to deal with like injuries and um and being like what's the word humble you get humbled all the time um with the trainings but the, the one main key is saying staying consistent with your training pretty much every single week for your whole life and when you look into the research and all the science and and, and, and all those different things that are diving deep into the study is what you start to realize is that resistance training in the body is it's anti-aging um, losing fat is anti-aging. It activates all your different anti-aging pathways and your certain pathways and, and, and stuff like that as well. Makes your body more resilient. It increases your immune system. And they've sort of, what I believe is there's like a little bit of a stigma around bodybuilding per se. And instead of people thinking about going to the gym and training and they're thinking, oh, bodybuilding this or go, go build my body, like whatever it is, it's must be like, oh, look at these big guys in the gym or whatever it is. But my motivation is completely different. Like in terms of energy maintenance and health and longevity, you, when you wake up in the morning, like you brush your teeth, like there's, it's, it's a ritual to have it. It's completely, it's, it's super easy to do. You don't even think about it, right? But for training and going to the gym, I believe should be the same thing because if you're looking at an event like, oh, I want to get fit for this wedding or I want to get fit for this. I want to fit into these. I want to slim down. I want to put on some muscle to get a girl or whatever, whatever the uh, motivation is. That one motivation, once it's there and it's done, it's gone. And you go back to, oh, no, now I'm not proud. Now I'm not looking at this and oh, I don't feel as confident anymore and I don't want to take my shirt off at the beach or something like that comes up instead, which is, can be quite annoying and quite painful. So instead, if you take responsibility and, and sort of think about it in a different sort of way and take out the bodybuilding stigma and think of it as like energy maintenance, um, then it makes it a little bit easier to get to the gym more consistently and, and build a body that you like as well. Hmm. So how much time does it take at the gym? Seriously, and like in all honesty, 
I'd say half an hour, five times a week minimum. <laughs> like, and what's, what's, what's half an hour really? Like, and this is doing it naturally. Yeah, I'd say yeah, five times a week, half an hour, um, do, doing it naturally without using anything extra, like any sort of other crazy things. And so not, not crazy things, but using saunas and ice baths and, and different other methods or diving deep into any other like biohacking type of science. Instead, this is just pure training. <laughs> Right. And do you do the biohacks, the, the infrared saunas and the ice baths and all that? Yeah, I definitely do. So one of the things that in the um, WBFF competitions is they, it's an untested competition, which is majority of um, the big, the, the bigger competitions is that they're untested for uh, performance enhancements. So as a natural competitor, I'm like, well, <laughs> how can I get an upper hand? How can I be like extremely as like as healthy as possible in order to, you know, get a little edge on, on everyone. And so I dove really deep into getting like my DNA tested. Um, I went real deep into doing a whole lot of psychology work, uh, psychology work so that I could make sure that I was like staying real consistent and I was really disciplined, dove deep into like meditation so that I could heal as best as possible. Obviously, you know, the difference between sympathetic and parasympathetic states. And, and if you're, you know, in a sympathetic state, what we figured out for bodybuilding is that you only want to be in a sympathetic state for one hour a day, roughly one hour and a little bit more. And the rest of the day, you essentially want to be like a monk, super Zen in a parasympathetic state. Cause that one hour during the day, you want to be a hundred percent warrior and a hundred percent beast and really test and push and challenge yourself. And when you do, you damage like all the, all the good stuff in your body, you damage all the, all the muscles. And as your body's healing for the rest of the day, the longer that you can remain in a parasympathetic state, the better you're going to grow, the, the more optimized your hormones are, et cetera, et cetera. But also when it comes to ice baths and, and saunas and, and other things, like they um, play a big role because they release heat shock proteins, activate your NRF2 pathways, obviously, as you know, and um, all the cold shock proteins and all those different things. So using those for recovery and um, using them when you like when you get sick or run down or tired, because you would obviously know the studies or I'm, I'm sure that you might've talked about it beforehand, something, something crazy. It's like, saunas and heat stock proteins like increase like prevent muscle muscle wastage by like 95 or 98 percent or something something absolutely ridiculous if you're getting into like a sauna a couple of times a week like it literally just prevents all, like pretty much all muscle wastage which is crazy so like i because i use fasting in my um in my uh, in my bodybuilding routines and and things like that as well i'm like cool so add a sauna in there and um, prevent all this muscle wastage and and i can i can keep a really um healthy looking and a fit attractive body that's awesome. Yeah, I just learned of a term recently called hormesis. Yeah. And, and uh, Dr. Pompa was explaining this at the biohacking conference I was at a few weeks ago. And the idea is that you can have these positive stressors like uh, cold shock from uh, an ice bath or uh, intermittent fasting is actually... A, a positive stressor as well. You can stack these stressors and that then upregulates hormone production of things like growth hormone that will uh, yield uh, better health and uh, longevity, more uh, better performance, all sorts of great outcomes happen from upregulating uh, up regulating these hormones. I'm actually going to have Dr. Pompa back on this podcast. He was on uh, several years ago, and we didn't talk about hormesis in, in that episode. So he's going to come back, and we're going to talk about hormesis, a whole episode of it. So that's going to be fun. But the uh, the the stuff that you do is, um, yeah, definitely, I would say biohacking. It's also just good common sense uh, health to be um, intermittent fasting, or the, I guess the more correct terminology or more accurate terminology is time restricted eating. Because if you're eating within an eight hour window, or maybe even better, a six hour window, and then the rest of that time you're not eating anything, not taking in any any real calories, that um, gets your uh, autophagy going, right? So it's eating uh, your 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 cells that are no longer good get yeah. chomp, chomped up. And, and that's, 
not going to happen if you're always uh, chowing down on Snickers bars all day long. So <laughs> no, definitely won't. But I do fasting a little bit differently. So I don't actually do intermittent fasting. Well, oh, really? Why do you, do, how do you do it? Yes. So I do like one 24 hour to 48 hour fast a week is uh-huh. essentially what I do. So I'll do like a rough, in terms of intermittent fasting, I'll probably do 12 to 14 every single day. Not for the fact of intermittent fasting though. I like to wake up and have a couple of hours before eating, mainly for brain performance and to do some cardio. Because once you do, as you mentioned with the, with the hormesis, if you're a little bit fasted in the morning, it also works having a coffee. If you do cardio and have something like like a cold shower in there as well, you're stacking all these reasons for your your hormesis to, to I don't remember the exact term there, but uh, work well. And then when you finally eat, I save all my carbs to, for later at night time so that I have good brain performance, that I have good energy and that my body's in a state of burning fat and getting things through. And after doing a DNA test, understanding that um, uh, my, my, my body is way more predisposed to thrive off of a low carb diet which sucks because i like carbs so much but <laughs> me too <laughs> but it's Very just yummy. what we got to do <laughs> oh man i was just like please get me some bread and butter for the love of god but no we can't do that <laughs> yeah. well, not lots amounts anyway um not yeah. if i don't want to feel as optimized as i do all the time which is great so i do things like that and then i'll do like a 124 hour fast which is known or termed as a mini fast um, to a 42 hour fast. And it was really, I had this really interesting story because I, I dove real deep down into the, to the fasting rabbit hole. And I was talking with my um, dad about it and he wanted to lose a whole bunch of weight and he doesn't, he doesn't really exercise to do so much. And I was like, well, firstly, one, we should remove carbs. Let's try this experiment and we'll build you up to learn how to do some three day fasts. He lost, I think a total of 27 kilos, 28 kilos within a two and a half to three month like period healthily because he was practicing a 24 hour fast every single week. He built up to doing 48 hour fasts. Um, not every single week, but regularly he built up to a three day fast, not every single week, but he did a couple. And then he did a, a challenge of eight weeks in a row where he did a, a three day fast every single week for eight weeks in a row. He had all of these tests done beforehand overweight. He was like, had these tests from the doctors, his cholesterol was like way too high. He had polyps inside of his gut, which were like a little bit scary and, and um, a warning because he had to get like his prostate checked and all those things for sort of cancer and all these all these other health markers that were coming up. And now he's fantastic and he's remained fantastic. And it's been a year since then. And he only does like 24 to 40, 48 hour fast. He like absolutely cleansed everything out. And it's, it's really interesting as far as like autophagy goes because it actually maxes out on the third day. It goes up to something like 800% on like... Um, uh, during the afternoon in the in, in the third day so it's very it's very interesting so he went through all those and like all his health is just like on tier and he's he looks great feels great and he's he's got more energy than all his friends and all his friends complain about everything and he's like well, well i'm great so <laughs> yeah, that's that cool is story. amazing well yeah. yeah you probably saved his life <laughs> yeah well that's what we do that's what we, we um um we say and i don't take that like lightheartedly as well because when we had a little scare, I was like, well, we've got to do something like I want my dad to be absolutely thriving and his um, relationship with food changes as well. Cause obviously, as you know, if you do any sort of prolonged fasting or some sort of um, any type of period where you're restricting food for a long period of time, the food that you choose is with well, the relationship that you have with food and how food tastes completely changes. And yeah, his is like completely changed. It went from chocolates at nighttime and snack on chocolates. And now he just has like Greek yogurt and berries and like Manuka honey. And yeah, he's just, he's just living his best life, which is so good to see. And I'm, I'm so proud. So thanks for bringing, like mentioning that and jogging that story back up. Cause it's always a real good one. <laughs> well, <laughs> all it takes is one person listening to this and they re- relate to the story and they make some behavior changes or they encourage a loved one to do that. And you've saved a life just by being on this show. Yeah, it's, it's so true. And especially if they want to go through um, properly, I actually have a course, a course on it. I explain the, the entire thing, not just like a shameless plug, but like, like if anyone did want to, <laughs> did want to know, you can dive into the fasting, there's resources everywhere. And I have like uh, some podcast episodes that on that as well, but I did create oh, we'll, a we'll link to those. Explained it. Yeah. yeah. So I'll link to in the show notes to the, your course and to the podcast episodes that talk about fasting. 
if you just yeah. send me those links, uh, you know, after after we're done recording. Yeah, we'll do. I did them okay. with my dad as well, so it's pretty interesting listening to him. <laughs> oh, very cool, very cool. Yeah. So, so I did a different kind of uh, fasting regimen. I did a forty-two day metabolic reset, and my eating window was eight hours a day, no snacking. So it was just two meals in that eight-hour window, and then uh, those two meals were completely devoid of carbs and oils. It was four ounces of protein, four ounces of, sh of uh, fruit, and four ounces of, uh, of vegetables. And, and you could have unlimited amounts of, of uh, uh, high water content vegetables. Like for example, it could have a huge salad, you know, lots of spinach if you want to, or, or, or unlimited amounts of cucumbers or something like that. But, but the, uh, uh, the denser vegetables, four ounces, that's it. And, uh, yeah, that was hard. That was hard, but I pulled it off. I did the full, uh, 42 days. Then you're supposed to do another 30 days of a maintenance diet to, you know, just kind of keep your body in this a uh, place of of uh, expecting not to get too too much junk and i i completely blew it after the 42 days i'm like yay <laughs> hello sugar i missed you uh yeah, but i did lose 20 pounds i lost 20 pounds and i lost four percent body fat well well done. So i got down to to 13 percent 13% Whoa. body fat. Now I'm back up to 15 now or 14. When did you... eight. I did this about uh, two months ago. I finished about a month ago. So yeah, I, I I'm not going to repeat it. I, I don't need to, but I, I lost quite a lot of, of, uh, of visceral fat. And nice. uh, now my, my stomach is much flatter. <laughs> it's not, it's not like a washboard, but it's, uh, noticeably different and it's pretty cool. So How'd that worked with your for digestion? me. I followed Sachin Patel's uh, protocol. Well, it was, um, uh, I don't know if I can really talk about this too much on this, uh, podcast, I guess. Uh, what the heck? It, I, <laughs> It was watery, okay? The my okay, stools yeah, were yeah. watery. Yeah. But um once I started eating carbs again, you know, that, that went away. And mm -hmm. you weren't supposed to go hog wild on carbs after the 42 days you're supposed to kind of ease into it and just have some yeah, a little bit of starchy vegetables optionally and you know, not have a bunch of uh french fries and stuff. But <laughs> Yeah, like I said, I uh, we're human. <laughs> I, 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 there's a difference. I'll have to tell you. There's a difference between restricting and suppressing. I was totally suppressing those forty two days. Ah, uh, uh, yeah, one week to one week to go. Oh my goodness, I can't wait. <laughs> Definitely suppressing. So I I I recommend restricting, and then it's a little easier to keep it in check. But I I want to get to a place where I'm a. It's a kind of a happy medium. Where I don't yeah. feel deprived. I, I went two and a half years without eating sugar for the most part. And it was just during holidays, like my birthday or Christmas, that sort of thing, where I'd eat desserts. And then the rest of the time, no desserts. I went two and a half years like that. And and then That's I completely impressive. fell off the wagon. <laughs> 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 but I didn't feel that deprived I, I, because I would allow myself to have uh you know sugary desserts on on holidays it's like oh well it's... halloween's coming yeah, up you know or whatever right <laughs> yeah and i think it also depends on um like you have to try a few different things to find out what works best for you and then and that work at a certain time and mm -hmm. then sticking to that there's like one thing in fitness competitions that like you can't do <laughs> is when you've set an intention for like a, a competition there's no room for for like any movement for whatever it is or like cheating on your diet or, or, or eating sugar or something like that, which I think is, can be, depending on how you look at it, can be unhealthy or very healthy. Because as you mentioned, I really like that term. So thanks for saying that suppress or, um, what was the other word? Restrict. You used? 
restrict or suppress. I really like those two ter- that two, those two terms. I think that's very helpful because a lot of people when they enter a bodybuilding competition will suppress the whole time instead of have a little bit of restriction there instead. But what is really good is you have something um, to do. And if it's like sort of your lifestyle and like that's something that you're going to do and you have like you have an event or you have an excuse where you have to stick to something and you have a good relationship with it where you're not suppressing because if you have an event and you're suppressing, you'll, you'll never stick to it <laughs> or you will relapse afterwards. But if you have something that you can, you know, work towards, be proud of and have some like the right excuse to do something, um, I find it a lot easier to actually yeah. get through and do things. Yeah. And it also makes a big difference if you incorporate it into your identity. The person yeah. who stops smoking or changes their diet and that's a behavior versus who they are now. Big difference, right? I'm a non-smoker is an identity, whereas I don't smoke. Until when? Like, how long are you going to go before you can start smoking again? <laughs> All right, so you one nicotine tablet away. <laughs> right. No, yeah, I 100% agree. So I find that with a lot of people that I work with, like the entrepreneurs that I work with, a little exercise that we do, which is very simple and it's very easy. And we have a discussion because you know, a lot of people sometimes just don't have the time to sort of self-reflect to have those moments so they kind of get me in to be like oh give me some time to think about myself <laughs> and we'll do like a um an exercise which is really simple we're just like okay what does the best version of yourself look like and let's write it down let's map it out and and you completely map it out and with with all the men that i work with every single time like fit and healthy comes up every single time and then we just start looking at okay so if this is the best version of yourself what does this person do every single day and they're like well so easy, it's just working on the fundamentals. It's like, well, they probably get up just a little bit earlier or they go to bed a little bit earlier. The first thing they do is like drink a bunch of water in the day and, and they go to the gym most days and they, they do cardio and they, and they eat healthy food and they have a little bit of time to, you know, like they eat like 80% healthy, 20% um, soul food is what we like to call it. So, <laughs> and then we just map all those things out and we just go through like a hundred different things throughout the day for just like all the little things that they would do to be the best version of themselves and how they'd like make just a little bit of time here, a little bit of time here um, so that they can really optimize their brain and their energy because ultimately like people who are entrepreneurs or business owners, um, like they're the, like the, they're the most important part of the business. Like they're the leaders <laughs> and mm. Like, I think there was literally a study done. I can't remember where I read it. Read it, and It was one of the leadership books. And it was like, uh, if a leader is down or a little bit like unproductive, it's like the whole business drops by like that same amount of percent. Something, something like that. Don't quote me on it. I can't remember. But I know it was quite drastic. I was like, oh my goodness. And it was literally like the most important thing is the CEO or the leader and the mood that they're in, the decisions that they're making and the energy that they're in. And it's like, well... People want to be the best version of themselves and start a business and get themselves optimized and all those different things. <laughs> when we're looking at like just what they do on a day, it's, it's very simple. And then when we look at those and go, okay, I like doing this in the exercise. Let's just picture yourself right now. Like if you do, if you're just doing everything that you're doing currently at the moment for the next five years, what does it look like? For the next 10 years, what does it look like? For the next 20 years, what does it look like? And then just working our way up. And they're always like, oh my gosh, that's, that's disgusting. That's horrible. I hate that. And then, yeah, they do. They're like, oh, this is the worst. This is literally a picture. This is what's going to happen. Oh, my goodness. And then we do, okay, so if you do all the things that the best version of yourself does, let me look at five years from now, 10 years from now, 15, 20, 25, just keep going up. They're like, that looks like heaven. That's that's amazing. That's like everything I want. And I'm like, can't, like we just have this little realization, just like look at all these little things that this person's doing within a day. And they just got to keep consistent with them. And they're like, oh my goodness. And it sort of like removes um, imposter syndrome. Because I believe that if you start doing all the things that uh, the best version of yourself does today, the only variable that is preventing you from getting all the things that you want and manifest in your dreams and your goals and your ideas is just time. Hmm. So That's cool. So you said manifesting your dreams. That sounds a little woo-woo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. Like I dive in deep into the, well, I wouldn't say deep, but I dabble into the uh, the woo-woo stuff a little bit. Love it. <laughs> What's, uh, tell me more about that. How's, how does well, that work into your coaching and, and into your own personal life? Well, we actually um, run quite a few like um, like medicinal, like uh, like psychedelic mushroom ceremonies. Like I do that um, uh, quite often, quite regularly and, and microdose quite a bit. Um, but it sort of started off, 
just to dive in deep, I think everyone's read like Think and Grow Rich, the book, right? One of the, one of the yeah. best books in the world. And one of the things that stuck with me out of that book was the, the fact that the law of attraction, they have more science around the law of attraction than what they do for gravity. And I was like, what? <laughs> I think that is absolutely insane. There's one nugget out of the book that I completely took and like it changed my perception immediately. And it was like, well, if this is the case, then surely we can do like other things. And in terms of just like manifestation, visualization, um, positive affirmations, being in your best energy, like I'm trying to think of some experiences because every time that I'm following along the path of my own hero's journey, like one of the parts in the hero's journey, if you, if you look at the model is when you answer the call and you start like diving into the, to the world of the unknown is if you do answer the call correctly and you're on the right path is you get supernatural aid is the term meaning like the universe or the unconscious is going to serve you. So, you know, when you make a right decision, synchronicities, as you know, start happening as we talked about it on our podcast, right? When sync, you just think like, whoa, this is amazing. And it's, it's just really small things to myself. Like for me, I'll just start thinking like, hmm, okay, I'm working, I'm doing these things. And man, I actually kind of need some more money at the moment. Like I'm upgrading with a few things that are happening. Like I should probably work on getting some more clients and then I won't even do anything. And like the next day I'll have two people ring me up and be like, Hey, I want to start coaching. I'm like, Oh, great. <laughs> I was like, okay, I'm, I'm ready to be like, get into the big game, jump up, jump up, like level into the fitness competitions. I want to win a pro card. Um, I think it's time for me to do that. And you know, I competed against all these other guys and performance enhancement drugs and stuff like that. And I remember looking at them behind the show like, well, I'm screwed. <laughs> all these guys look fantastic. And then um, I said to my like, force myself in my own mind, I was like, well, no, I'm not. I've like manifested this. Everything in my life right now is serving this one point I've won. And I knew that I won like the day before the show, like because you see each other throughout, throughout the day. I think it was the day I was like, I've already won this. And there was no doubt in my mind. I literally on stage before they called out like my name to win, I stood there and when they called out number second, I got ready to stand forward and they called out my name and I stepped forward and I was like, yep, that was me. <laughs> so that was like really quite fantastic. But there's a whole bunch of things like that as far as opportunities that have happened. Same with partners, relationships, I'm up, ready for a girlfriend now. Boom, walked into my life. It's just insane. That's awesome. But that's when you know you're on the right path and you're on the right journey and, and, and you're doing the right things um, for sure. Yeah. Well, yeah. You, you, you do get the supernatural assistance. Uh, they're just waiting there for uh, you to ask, really. Yeah, so true. <laughs> Asking for help so important. <laughs> yeah. I actually got that out of a mushroom journey once. We were just talking about it for, I don't know how long it was in the journey, but we were just talking about how important it was to ask for help <laughs> or like imagining if it's some sort of um, you could say energy that's a, that's just around all the time. And every time you're frustrated or stuck, like people also like giving help and they like, you know, rewarding people and stuff like that. So asking for help is like extremely important. And <laughs> we're all just blowing our minds. And for the next like couple of weeks after that, um, we were asking people um, for help in our own lives. And uh, we're just discussing about it. Cause we have like a good like men's group. And it was just amazing, just some of the results that come up. They were like, oh, like I had this thing for my house and I was stressing out like so much for it. I asked this one person for a little bit of help and it's just solved all my problems. <laughs> so I find that quite important. Well, well, how did you end up doing uh, mushroom ceremonies, experiences? like, or, or, or was it ayahuasca that you started with and then you went to mushrooms? Like, How did this all unfold for you? So the first time I took mushrooms was just being a, a kid in Amsterdam, um, trying them out. And that sort of was, you know, I think a lot of people who have used them recre recreationally have just been like, well, these aren't supposed to be used recreationally. <laughs> That's for sure. I ended up just like thinking the whole time and I was like, whoa, this is like crazy. Like where, where's, my, where's my brain going? And I was like, okay, so this, is, this isn't like the sort of um, stuff because I've always sort of been – uh, a little bit in tune with being consciousness, being the best version of yourself, being in really good energy and just being aware of different things. I was like, okay, so this like needs some respect around it for sure. Or some reverence mm. um, around how, how to use these. So one of the, I think was one of the next times after those I did a, it was for a personal development exercise with me and my ex-partner. And it was a beautiful exercise we did together because we was just at like the start of our relationship and we just wanted to, enhance it 
you know, we just really wanted to enhance and we did this like, like a, a full proper ceremony together. Like it was just us, but we, we went through, we, we set intentions. We, um, we d- discussed all the things that we wanted to feel and talk about prior. We had like a week to sort of feel into it. And then after we had the mushrooms, we had this, this like mind blowing, like, like a love experience. And we had, we got to talk about all these different things, um, sort of like wants and desires that we didn't even realize that we needed or wanted to talk about. And being in fitness competitions, one of the things that I'm very aware of is the more love that you give and the more love that you receive is also going to put your body into a parasympathetic state. So I wanted to maximize that as well. (laughs) It's like a little bit selfish, unselfish there, but it's a hack. I mean, you can use it. So so we did those and that brought ourselves together like like really well. We like had exercise where we just like wrote little things to each other and and things like that. We had these very conscious conversations and it was it was amazing. Like it was just mind blowing. And that sort of opened like uh, perceptions to the world of how important um, it, c- it can really be because after like after that we were just just so fantastic. And from then I dived into an ayahuasca journey and Mother Ayahuasca was just said to me like basically you are not ready yet. <laughs> And just come in, I just went, oh, Jesus, this is, um, this is quite insane. And then I've done quite a few mushroom journeys with men and men's group afterwards, where we'll usually do like a, a cacao ceremony, um, go to somewhere, someplace we have done like sound healing ceremonies as well. But it'll we usually start off with a, a cacao ceremony. We'll um, dive into a heart space of being extremely appreciative or in a heart space of gratitude, um, not just for like for life, for being alive, for being the positions that we all are. Um, and just to, to summon like really good energies for the mushroom journey. Um, everyone would like say a poem or something like that. And then we'd also set intentions for the ceremony as well. And we'd always go somewhere like out in nature where it would be like secluded and, and quite fantastic. And yeah, we'd run these, um, ceremonies and just get like so much out of them. We'd have like, it'd just be such a good mix of fun. So it wasn't all just like, oh, let's self-develop because you know we just kind of let you just let the mushrooms do what they need to do we just like the, the the medicine is you know a lot more intelligent than we are so we just we jump in um we have like a whole a whole lot of fun we try to notice everything that comes up we self-reflect we ask big questions we allow each other to you know express in ways of you know however people want to express whether that's singing dancing like what, whatever it is and um yeah, it's, it's quite profound. Some of the, some of the experiences that we've had and how it's like really helped us to literally be better versions of ourselves and, and have a more positive outlook on life and make, and make better decisions and do, do things like, like ask for help or um, not feel so shy about sharing our talents. Like I grew up through my childhood singing, dancing and acting. And I got really nervous for like singing like my whole life because my mum was like a, a singing teacher and I'd always have fear of judging from my mum, like, oh, my good singer, my good singer. It wasn't too on our last mushroom journey where I basically like sung in front of everyone to cut the story short. And ever since then, I've sort of been really comfortable um, like singing in front of people. And I was like, it feels great. Um, yeah. Will you, to, will you to sing something for that. us now? <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> not on the podcast. I was more making noises with like uh like my throat. It was quite it was quite weird. It was sort of like I'm channeling some sort of light energy, sort of like some sort of sound healing ceremony that was happening. But yeah, in terms of just like being around people, um, not over a podcast, <laughs> but being around people in my space that I know and I'm comfortable with, like I'd never sing, but I can sing now, which is which is fantastic, which can't sort of come out of that, like, oh, okay, I can actually like sing along and not have to be like, oh people judge me for my singing <laughs> well you so can work cool. on that as your next step is to sing on your the podcast. next step sing on a podcast with stefan <laughs> <laughs> that's right okay so w- yeah. what is a cacao ceremony for somebody who's not familiar with that is that that's cacao it doesn't sound like a illicit drug or anything no it's not but it's actually quite it's really quite fantastic to explain cacao so cacao is just chocolate and it's like one of its most raw forms and it's um, essentially the way chocolate uh, is made now was, I think it was an old company. It wasn't Nescafe or something else that started with a V, but essentially Nescafe um, and this other company figured out how to like pound sugar or pulverized milk. And then they made that with chocolate before cacao was actually made um, in a very ancient experience, like with the, with the Aztecs and had this weird, like swinging, like a pot thing that they would make and they'd get the cacao bean and sort of just do a little bit of like cooking or something to it. So it would go brown. But 
the old school Spanish like settlers and, and boat people would literally, they'd say things about the cacao, um, like this miracle wonder food that you'd only have to eat once a day and everyone would be in their best energy. And we figured out recently that cacao in its in that stage of like ceremonial grade cacao is like the highest form of antioxidants you can get out of any food period. Um, it's, 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 it's insane. The amount of like flavonoids and stuff in there, it's, it's amazing. And it's like extremely high in all your minerals. Like it's, it's, and including like cacao butter and, and different like the fats and healthy fats in there as well. It's just, it's just fantastic. It's like this superfood of just essential vitamin, vitamins, minerals, and just a whole bunch of other good stuff. But it also has a few things in there that are only found in cacao, and I can't remember the exact names. They something like like they got an ene at the end, theum, 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 that is, it has got L-theanine. I'm pretty sure in them, but they got these other ones in there too. And essentially, what they do is they sort of literally open the valves and things in your heart. Then they release these chemicals in your brain, and then they sort of get you this really weird high feeling if it's done properly. And obviously, if you've know a little bit about the chakras, like the cacao is just right in the heart chakra, literally like it opens the valves in your, in your heart. Like it's, it's, it's quite insane. And if you do a proper cacao ceremony where you have like a decent dose of cacao and it's like the most chocolatiest thing that you've ever tasted in your entire life. And to be honest, all, a lot of the things that I've manifested, you use the word manifest in my life come from one cacao ceremony that I did in Bali. Um, I'd say when I was 22, 23, and it's crazy. We'll, we'll get into it if you like, but I did like a ceremony there and everything that I, I figured out in that ceremony is like happening in my life at the moment. Insane. And um, essentially, once you drink the cacao, it takes like five to 10 minutes. Usually you do like a little meditation, like a little visualization and, and give a lot of uh, appreciation um, post drinking the well, whilst and post drinking the cacao. And then you just go through a meditation and sort of see what comes up. And it's really interesting because you do get, it's not visuals that you get on mushrooms, but you just when you close your eyes sometimes and you think and you can like clearly see pictures that you're thinking, the cacao works in a way where you, you things will just start popping up, but it's, it's really profound. And I like to call, there's one thing that happens that has happened commonly among people that I know and people that have coaches, we call it the cacao flashes, where you'll just start to just people that you just really love just pop up and you're like, oh. God, I love you so much. Like, or may you just be so happy. And people just sort of pop up in your own mind. And you're like, oh, wow, this is really cool. I love all of these people. This is quite like fascinating. Or you'll just start to come up and be overwhelmed with feelings of love. So it's a really good thing to do. Um, like I found like with some girls that I have seen before. And <laughs> that works really well because they just get into this like real intimate space, which is which is really well. Um, but every single girl that I have done it with has cried, not for the sake of crying, but just an overwhelming of just like, I feel so much love right now. But as, as a guy, like didn't cry, but also feel like you're like, yes, I feel so good and so happy and so positive. But you feel like warm and fuzzy in the chest. Like it's real weird. Like it's an actual sensation. It's not warm and fuzzy as in like, oh, like I feel love right now. Like it's like a physical sensation. Like you're like, whoa, what's going on in here? And then, um, yeah, when you start meditating, it's just like a really uh, beautiful, positive experience, which um, again, jacks your parasympathetic state right up so that you have more sympathetic tolerance. So if when you're doing things like training really hard, going to the gym, trying to crush goals, trying to deal with as much stress as possible, you've just trained. I like to say cacao ceremony is like the best way to get into the gratitude gym. Hmm. And um, it's like a, like a, a, um, a super, a super, yeah, it's just like a, a super gra a gratitude training is basically what it is. Cause you can practice obviously gratitude every day and, three points of gratitude equals 20% happier if you're doing that every day consistently, which is a little fact that I really like. Shout out to Brian Johnson for that one. And um, yeah, so when you're getting in doing a cacao ceremony, you're getting like really grateful. So that's sort of like, you know, getting into the gym, we're getting ready to do a really big lift, but for gratitude, which is quite fantastic because it does play out later on, like in your entire life. <laughs> it's not like you just do it one day hmm. and um it goes away. Once you've had that experience, it's there forever. And it's very easy to, to draw back on. So. And how often do you do cacao ceremonies and do you do them with shamans or do you do them on your own or just with friends? How does that work? So we just do them on our own. Um, or you do that, you do them by yourself or you do them with friends or you do them with a group of people. So the one I did in Bali, we did sort of with a, a shaman, but I wouldn't call it a, a shaman because you're not exactly going on a crazy journey. I'd say they're more of a facilitator. 
And like the one, one that I did in Bali, we essentially bless the cacao, um, which was a bit weird woohoo for me. I was like, okay, but <laughs> blessing the cacao, woo! Like that was a little, that was a little bit much. I was like, I don't need to bless it, but okay. But they did talk about where it come from, the origins and stuff. I was very interested in that, and what I dove into was like the science of it to understand what actually, like, what chemicals are in there specifically. I have a I have an article and a podcast on this if people are listening as well. I'm sure we'll link that below. But um, it's, it's, I found it super interesting, and um, and I wanted to make sense because I like physical stuff obviously being in the gym I like the science I like the the whatever like makes sense and I can feel it in my body and do stuff with it with my body so so there's not exactly a massive need for a shaman but the guide and the facilitator basically is just if you go to any normal meditation facilitation is basically what it was like but using cacao putting yourself into a state of gratitude and taking advantage of the minerals and some of the really good chemicals to get you into a really good positive headspace but there's people that do cacao ceremonies for a little bit like every single day and they just have like a small one instead of a coffee every single morning. And some people take them before bed because it has like theanine and some other things in there that can help you get a good sleep, which is interesting. If you're caffeine tolerant, because there is a little bit of caffeine in there as well. However, if you do them in a group setting or a personal setting, it depends what you use it for. So I like doing cacao ceremonies um, when there's a reason to do them. So I like doing them when... Um, like for example, we've all got a group of friends or I'm coaching a group of people and everyone's talking and some everything's sort of starting to synchronize and it's like, okay, I think at the moment, which would be really good for everyone is if we jump into a cacao ceremony and see what everyone thinks and then cool, let's do one. And then we do it, super positive for gratitude and then it's like, you know, the next few months, everyone's just kicking goals, really happy and in their best like heart space and good energy. Same if you're either talking to someone or if you want to escalate a relationship um, in terms of an intimate relationship or you just want to get close to a partner or if you just want to get really close to a friend and have a deep conversation, cacao ceremonies are also really important for that as well. Or they can be like a really good tool that you can use to actually use those. So I like using these tools. It's sort of like, you know, instead of using weights or whatever machines in the gym, using all these different little other tools in terms of enhancing life, good energy, um, positive <laughs> positive energies or um yeah, get, getting closer to people something like that so yeah and and some of these things you can microdose like ayahuasca sure. you can microdose and uh i think you can microdose have you microdosed ayahuasca? i have not even done any of this <laughs> oh yes right yeah, yes right I've, I've I've you, you know I've, a lot about them <laughs> yeah I've, I've uh experienced a psychedelic like trip just from breathing Breathing, yeah, yeah, from from breath work in in India, and that was amazing. Everything. No, actually, that the first time I got uh, like a trip like that was actually just getting touched on the head by a monk. That was a deeksha. <laughs> I, I I wasn't doing any special breathing or anything. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. I remember, you, I remember you saying that one. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I recommend. I, I'd encourage the cacao. The cacao one's very like mild. It's not a it's not a psychedelic at all. <laughs> There's no like psychedelic properties, but it does have a very like awesome touch. But yes, in terms of microdosing, I microdose um, mushrooms quite regularly, um, mainly to get really creative or to enhance the um, like my reflective ability of a space. Um, especially if I'm in a social setting. Once once you're comfortable in a social setting, I wouldn't rec ever recommending microdosing or doing mushrooms at all if you haven't done them a few times in a social setting beforehand. But sometimes if I just want to sort of like read the energies of social setting to figure out like who I need to be um, and like show up as a better version of myself because I can read like things a little bit better, it helps. But one of the best things that I find about mushrooms is if you do those and microdose in, the, in those situations is after you've done them a couple of times, you don't need it anymore. Which is which is great. <laughs> so you've done that a few times and you're like, oh, I don't I don't need a microdose here, I don't need to do anything. I can just I can just read this really well because I've experienced this beforehand, which mm -hmm. is fantastic. Mm. Yeah. Very cool. Myself personally anyway. <laughs> I have an episode of this podcast that's all about microdosing. Uh, Iowa. Whoa. All that, yeah. Dennis Norton. Oh, Mexico. link it link it below. I'd love to listen to that one. Yeah, yeah, I I will. Uh, let's talk about your cacao ceremony in Bali and how all the stuff that you, uh, came up with in, in that ceremony, uh, has manifested or come to pass. Yeah. So that, that was really cool. So I remember, I think what's really important that 
a lot of people take for granted is just setting a space like to think or to, to figure a whole bunch of things out themselves. And it's not until, because even like when, when I'm traveling, cause I was, I was traveling at the time and I went there just like by myself to sort of uncover all these things out about myself. That was the intention. But even just like I was just noticing throughout a day of just, if you're just getting a coffee and worrying about what you're going to eat, worrying about what you're going to do during the day, like moving around, you're going to write here, you're going to do some work on your laptop here or whatever it is. You're not really setting any an intentional space to, to reflect or work on yourself. So I find that sometimes for people who, if they struggle to meditate, going to and, and doing something like a cacao ceremony or a sound healing or a meditation, you've got to find which one likes or resonates with you. Finding one that, that does resonate with you can be extremely important and can bring a whole lot of benefits. So I did just that for like a whole bunch of breath work and a cacao ceremony when I was there. I was super open-minded. I was just like, yep, yeah, I'm, I'm down for anything. Let's just see what happens. So the first thing is we get there and there's a whole bunch of everyone's like hugging each other. And I'm like, oh, I get it. Spiritual community in Bali. Like, <laughs> I'll chill over here. It's all good. <laughs> um, and then we, and then like we went in and everyone, like we all sat there and talked about the cacao. And then we did like this crazy blessing of the cacao. And I was like, oh gosh, that's a bit weird, but okay. <laughs> I'll bless it too. Cacao moi. Let's do it. Um, and, and after we drank, we just like laid down and the facilitator guided us through a meditation. And when we were there, which was, which was quite like profound was it took a little while for it to sink in, but because there was, it was like a 50 minute meditation was that things obviously were going to come up within like the 10 minutes of just sort of unraveling my brain and sort of everything that was happening on, on the front end and went, what's to say all the fear parts of your brain, everything sort of just like, we just figured out and then went allow me to get into the high performance part of my brain and start to think about things that are extremely important, things that I really want, and things that I really want to like manifest or have and goals. And I remember writing down at this time, I was like, cool. So I want to be like, like a professional athlete. I want to be one of the best, the best in the world at competing for what I want to do. I want to um, have a tribe of people that I work with close, closely that are, that are, that are entrepreneurs that are making an impact and changing the world. I want to do something like run my own podcast or do something like that where I'm going to, again, uh, make an impact and also which challenges me to be the best version of myself and learn as much as possible in order to continuously grow. And it's just a few other little micro goals in there as well. And I remember like thinking about all these things and I would, I was like 20 minutes in and I'd sat up and I was like, oh my goodness, I just figured all these things out. This is exactly what I want to do. This is what's making my heart like. Like this is what I'm feeling so energized right now because this is, this is it. This is what I've wanted, wanting to do. I've been unclear for like my goals and my purpose and, and everything. And, and this is it. Like I need to go and write this down, but I couldn't because I was stuck in this meditation. Everyone's laying down with their eyes closed, like having a good old time, like in, in their meditations. I was like, ah, oh, gosh, what am I going to do? So I laid back down, closed my, closed my eyes. And it was like adding another link onto the end of a chain. I just dropped back straight into that part of the meditation and then went through and figured everything out again. I went through and just went deeper and deeper of like more details for how I wanted to do it. And then I got up 10 minutes later and oh my gosh, I need to write this down. Like I can't forget, like these are my goals. This is what it is. I figured it out. Can't forget. Ah, everyone's still meditating. I had to like back down. This happened another two times. <laughs> Me just like getting up, being super frustrated. Like, okay, I can't forget this. So I'm just like running it through, like in my mind, the whole story of what I, what I um, was, thinking, was thinking about. And as soon as we finished, and like we, we propped up, everything was getting ready. The, the facilitator was um, up, up, up on the side because he was like walking around. And um, I remember like everyone was getting up to go and I basically like raced straight to my shoes. The facilitator looked at me, put his hands together and like bowed and like stared at me in the eyes. I put my hands together, bowed and then like sprinted out of there as quick as I could, jumped on my scooter, went back home. I wrote out two pages like of exact goals or exactly what I wanted. And they've just slowly started happening. Like every year, every few months, all the things in there have just, like started to happen and like I couldn't exactly like rattle off exactly what I've put in there right now but if I went through because I think the last time I went through was halfway through I think maybe maybe eight months ago eight seven months ago and I was like yes this is good <laughs> but before that I was like a year and a half ago I went through it and I went yes this is good <laughs> like on track so it's just like really quite beautiful thing which you know setting that time in that space having the cacao being in a really good energy and giving your body and your brain the best chance as possible 
to really reflect on you and what you want and what you want to create and who you want to be and, and, and what you desire, really letting it do that was just real powerful, especially for me. And yeah, I've just been sprinting since and having a blast doing it. Hmm. Seems like you, I don't know, connected with your higher self and uh, collaborated with your higher self because your higher self has the bigger view. It's like you're you're in the in in the forest on the on the forest floor, and your higher self is up above the treetops, and you can in that ceremony connect really well with your higher self and and collaborate and come up with these incredible goals and and uh missions and values and visions and all that really cool yeah 100 percent. yep yeah, that's a, a really good way of um putting it it was more like my higher self was like here <laughs> here's all the stuff you've been asking for i said thanks <laughs> yeah high five yeah quite beautiful <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> literally. Like, high five. Wow. Thanks, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk for a second about this uh, this blessing of the cacao thing. That you've mentioned this a couple of times. I think it's kind of funny because I'll tell you, I did not bless my food or drink uh, prior to this year, except on uh, like my wife is is Jewish, and so you know. Friday night dinner, Shabbat, you know, there's a blessing over the wine and over the, mm -hmm. the bread. And, you know, other than that, it's just like, chow down, right? Yep. Kind of mindlessly. But then after the veil was thinned for me, after that experience of, um, uh, I'm, my listeners are sick and tired of hearing it, I'm sure. But, you know, that whole thing uh, happened and I, I go uh, into it on other episodes. I realized that I should be blessing my food and everything I consume, supplements, water, everything. And, and uh, for two reasons. One is it transmutes it. it. doesn't just transform it, it transmutes it. And so even if you're having a Snickers bar, you can make it a healthy Snickers bar with the power of your intention and, and blessing. So you, you, can, uh, I don't know if you've heard of Dr. Emoto and how he would do these uh, experiments on water and uh, form crystals out of the water and water that had um, an intention placed on it of love or forgiveness or compassion or whatever would have all these beautiful crystal structures to it. And, and then uh, negative thoughts or, or, or feelings that were projected onto the water would create these horrible, ugly crystals. It's wild, really, really wild. And this is repeatable. It's, it's, um, uh, yeah, it's legit. So that's one piece of it. You actually make it healthier. And the second, which is as important, if not more, is to have gratitude for where that's coming from like you're alive that is a gift if you're good looking that is a gift if you are financially well off that is a gift if you have great friends great family if uh you know you're you're smart gifts you didn't necessarily earn these right and so having gratitude for that Snickers bar that you're about to eat or whatever it is, because you're alive and you don't have to beg for uh, handouts on the street like some people do. It, that's important. So, oh, for sure. Yeah. I actually dived into like some of the research of it with uh, Paul Check and Ben Pikulski because I remember like with the cacao, that was like the first time that I was like introduced for people blessing food. <laughs> Well, it was not even food. It was just like uh, blessing, like the plant. But it was instead of just doing like a like a like a normal blessing, it was it was, it was quite physical, quite intense. Everyone was screaming like go, <laughs> like, like I was insane. But yeah, I remember diving into yeah, it was so I was just like, well, this is a bit much. <laughs> but um, yeah, I dive into the research of blessing a little bit, and I was I was looking into uh, Paul Check and Ben Pakolsky's. um, and I think Ben Greenfield were talking about it, and literally just setting the intention before, like biologically before you eat, eat, eat your food 
and take a second as your whole body gets into a state where it removes the sympathetic stress, allows the parasympathetic to come up, digestion, like enzymes, hormones, gut health, everything like juices, liquid, all just sort of pour into the body and get it really ready before eating. So when you're eating, you get maximum amount of absorption as well and like nutrients out of the food that you're actually eating. And I believe it to be very um, true, like back to the fasting thing again, is every time that I do a longer fast, because the only times that I really bless food for myself is when I do do them is, is at dinner time. Because I think like, cool, I've, I've had the day, I've gotten through through my stuff. For me, it's like the way that like I, like I eat with things and, and do stuff structurally at the moment is like I sort of make the excuse up for myself is like, hey, you know, get, don't have to bust your food every time. But dinner really works well for me because that's like a cooked, prepared food that I've put time and energy and effort to. So before actually eating, allowing that time and setting that intention, which I think is quite fantastic, is, um, yeah, get your body like completely ready. And um, it, absor- it absorbs everything, which is like biologically I find um, insane. Mm. Nice. All right. Well, we're about out of time. So I want to switch to lightning round mode here where we just quickly go through a bunch of questions and see how far we can get in the next like a right. uh, few minutes. Sound good? Okay. All yeah. right. Awesome. So let's start with, is there a difference between bodybuilding and weightlifting? Yes, for sure. Okay. Big time. How, how far do you want to go into it? Because that's it's just a like a, a, a couple of sentence explanation of, of how. Okay, so happening. bodybuilding is uh, generating a stimulus in your muscles under resistance for the purpose of making it grow, when weightlifting is your body's ability to generate force and actually move weights. So, in terms of, I know bodybuilding has ruined the, like the stigma because everyone thinks so, mm, bodybuilders, big weightlifters. But essentially, I want to lift like the lightest weight amount of possible and still generate a stimulus within my muscle in order to make it grow so that I don't get injured and still grow and then use a heavier weight once that stimulus is no longer enough. Awesome. And how do you avoid injuries? What are the two or three most important things to do? So that's mind, literally it's all mind to muscle connection. The most important thing you can do is learn about your body. And the more you learn about the body, the more fascinating it is. And then like the more you learn about the body, the actual more fun you have in the gym. It's real weird. Every person who starts learning about their, how their body works when they get in the gym, like, oh my God, I have like more fun here. And that's literally it. Learning how your muscles work and contracting them in a way which is extremely specific in order to obviously generate a response or a stimulus is the best way possible. But the more you learn about your body and you see things is um, will prevent you from getting injuries. But also being aware and attuned to your body that when you start to get little niggles or anything is when you have to go over and rechange your um, exercise routine because bodybuilding prevents injuries. But like any sport, if you're a runner, if you're a sprinter and you're running all the time, eventually because you're doing the same movement pattern Every single day, something's going to go. If you have the same bodybuilding routine for years, it'll it'll something will start to move. But it's basically perfecting your routine. And then if something starts to niggle, you just change it a little bit and then just constantly, slowly change it and adjust it to how you are with your um, injury routines. And when you get injured as well, when you do get a little bit injured, don't stop training. Just learn how to train a little bit differently. And that'll prevent it all the time. I haven't like, I've had like little niggles and stuff, but I, I rarely get injured now. And when I do, I manage it effectively really well when I'm back in the gym a week later. Sounds like it would be beneficial to work with a trainer or at least a coach to help you do this all, all correctly and and strict as well. And, and with the, the right uh, rep- repetition and all that sort of stuff so that, uh, you get maximum benefit with the For minimum sure. amount of injuries happening. For yeah. sure. Having someone Do you work sort with of a, a you, trainer yeah. or a, co- a coach? No, I've learned everything myself. I ended up creating a training program for that exact reason. Like I was going to link that below, but I created a, a program for someone to learn all of those things and solve all of those problems because I actually learned in a, in a, in a shed, like I had a little gym in a shed out the back of, um, uh, back of my house when I was like, uh, growing up, from like, I think it was like 17, 18 to, to 21 was where I build um, most of my body in a shed. I didn't join a gym till I was 21. And because I, I didn't have a trainer or I didn't learn anything else, I was just learning everything myself intuitively for how my body would train. So I just learned my body really well. So by the time I got to a gym and they had all these other fancy new machines, I was like, oh my goodness, I can do all of these different things. Like 
like I can do 10 things in one different machine because I just learn how to, to change and move things in little slight directions. I'm like, this is fantastic. And then like sort of um, my body and progression just really grew after that because there's all these different ways to, to stimulate myself. So mm. yeah, I think understanding that's really important and just paying attention. Uh, attention. So if, if you ever see a physiotherapist or you see a chiropractor or you see someone else, ask them things, ask them, okay, how's my body work? What's going on here? What's going on here? And one of the beautiful things is the respect that you have around food as you, when you're blessing food and how after a fast, if you haven't eaten for a very long time and you break the fast, you're always sort of like, for me, I eat really slowly and mindfully, like every single bit, in my, my tongue, in my mouth, I'm like, oh, this is like the most fantastic thing ever. Food is an absolute This is the gift. best Snickers bar I've ever had. It's the best Snickers bar ever. Get that little crunchy <laughs> bit of peanut in there. Oh, baby. <laughs> um, yeah, it was the same thing, I think, or, I think around your body. Having that reverence and, and respect, like when you actually get to go into the gym and the way that like squeeze the muscles, train your body. It's like, I have this amazing beautiful body like everyone can chisel out something amazing it's like if i've done it naturally and had it consistent for like 10 years like anyone else can do it i i go to the gym for 40 minutes to 45 minutes a day four to five days a week and it's just being in there and just paying attention to this is what my body is this is how it's feeling this is what it's doing this is how it's moving and and appreciating it and you know sending some love toward towards your body in the gym instead of going to the gym out of my body sucks i need to lose weight i need to get fit need to get this girl and you're going to the gym as a sort of punishment, it'll never last and you'll never get the results you want and you're more likely to get injured. But if you go to the gym out of appreciation and love for yourself, out of respect, how you would for food and things like that, um, yeah, it's just the results and the how much you learn about yourself and your body and this, this thing that we're wearing <laughs> is just fantastic. I'm like, this is our machine. This is what we've got. And like at my age at the moment, I'm like, this is my Lamborghini right now as far as like, you know, success, or whatever goes. And I want this to be as best as it's possible. I want it running on the highest quality fuel. I want it to be able to do like, go down the track as fast as possible. I want it to, to, to look fantastic and be absolutely shiny. Um, so yeah, I do everything as possible to, to make sure that this like vehicle that I have is in its best condition. And to do that, I've got to show it some love. The same way people show their fancy cars or whatever they've got some love when they clean it every weekend or every single day and they're always making it super fantastic. I'm like, do that for yourself yeah. and see how the quality of your life improves. And it does, like it really does. Well, the difference is you can't just uh, take your body and check it in somewhere to get detailed. You actually have to do the work <laughs> yeah. yourself. <laughs> yes yes you can't go can, can you just detail this for me i'm not sure i think you might have had that little bit of done with your stem cells but <laughs> yeah i did do you stem cell therapy which then. was uh it was pretty cool but uh yeah most <laughs> most of the hard work has to be done by yourself now uh last question real quick so true. is uh relating to the tools and and resources that have been most impactful for you and you mentioned a few different mm -hmm. technologies well We've been chatting like infrared saunas and uh, DNA, DNA testing and so forth. Are there any particular vendors or um, uh, companies or, or, or supplements or tools that you want to specifically call out as some of the most impactful uh, for our listener? Oh, for sure. For sure. So I think an aura ring is very important. Um, I know that like a lot of people have them just tracking sleep software, but aura rings for me have just sort of been transformational to understand what to do throughout the day, how to get my body back into a uh, parasympathetic state if it's too sympathetic, what the trends are doing. Because I know a lot of people that have had aura rings and ended up not using them anymore. And I'm like, why? Like, it's just a beautiful technology that you can, if you understand it properly and deeply, it will reflect. And it's not just the physical stuff. So if you're on the right path I'm talking about beforehand, if you're on the right journey and supernatural aids happening and you have a really good conversation with someone or you have a clearing like a uh, moment with a cacao ceremony or you do something that you were like sort of scared to do and it needed to happen in your business or whatever and then the success happened, it reflects in your aura ring. You're like, wow, this is fantastic. I also really like bone broth and there's this company in Australia called Best of the Bone. Um, and we'll put a link because they have their, their, their websites like theherbaldoctors.com and they have a um, like a, a bone broth here, which is all from like organic grass fed pasteurized cows here. And they, they cook the bone broth in a very long method. And the bone broth that they have hasn't had heat therapy and it hasn't had high pressure therapy. And it comes in a goo. It's not a powder. The bone broth is not a powder. I sort of stay away from the powder ones. And I just get the goo ones because the goo ones just have like a whole lot more high quality of just all the nutrients in them. It's fantastic. 
and then also Eternum Labs. So like Eternum Labs have a whole bunch of different anti-aging products and a whole bunch of different antioxidant products that I really like to use um, for those as well. And also doing and learning for me, some really awesome um, things have been, I did Jordan Peterson's self-authoring program, which is really good. Um, I like using Sam Harris's waking up app. Mm. Um, I think that was like really good as well. And then um, also reading for me, I find any chance that I can do to get into the gym in terms of what are you going to call the gym, right? It's gym for training. I do. So in terms of reading, I'll get into the reading gym and I'll read a difficult book as well as reading like easy books. I'll read a difficult book. So it increases my ability to think, increases my ability to learn new words, increases my ability to actually really read on a, on a high level and get through some stuff. So I read old books like like crime and punishment or even just hero with a thousand faces or some frederick nature books something like that where it's just like difficult reading um i find uh, can be like extremely beneficial as well and then um what else would be really good there's a couple other things that were on the top of my mind but they were gone obviously sauna and ice bath i love doing a, a frosty fridays and get into an ice bath for eight to ten minutes at zero degrees <laughs> which is which can be quite cold and quite shocking to the body. I find that being really fantastic as well. Yeah, you got to work your way up to that. You can't just do that. You got to work your way up to that. Yeah, you don't do that on your first time, that's for sure. I've had some people do then afterwards, after they've done that, they've just been like, oh, I regret this. <laughs> I told you not to get in there for that long. <laughs> so, awesome. yeah, that's probably a few of the things there. Yeah, and and when you did the DNA testing, uh, what was it? The, the DNA company or some uh, simplified yep. genetics or something else? No, I just went real basic and simple. I did um, for, for what I was using. I just did DNA Fit, and they just I like their da- dashboard that they gave me at first because I'm using it for a um, like a, a gym and optimizing a, a point of view. I didn't need to see a whole bunch of other things. I researched into it, and I was like, you know, I'm just going to try this one because I like the dashboards that they looked at. And for me, it was very easy because. I went through seeing the dashboard and then looked on calls. So I adjusted my diet, my lifestyle, my routine to reflect what was in the dashboard. And then I got a whole bunch of like blood tests and I got a Dutch test afterwards to see everything. I just wanted to see absolutely everything. And it reflected quite well. It was like, cool. So the things that I'm doing here are like working quite well, but there's a few things that I do need to get on top of and get on track of. And a lot of it was more like, well, a little bit more meditation would serve you really well, Corey. That's for sure. <laughs> so, I was like, all right, let's get around that then. And the Dutch test, that is a, a hormone test. Yeah, the Dutch test is like a, it's a real, it's like a high quality profile test where you have your, uh, it's like a saliva and a urine test and you do it throughout the entire day and it tells your, how your cortisol and melatonin work perfectly. Um, but then it also has all of your different testosterones, all your different, um, all your different adrenal um, hormones as well and, and like your thyroid hormones. And then it also has like all your minerals and all these other different tests. And there's a very comprehensive um, test that tells you quite a lot and actually teaches you quite a bit as well. So it teaches you how different things work and how different things convert because you may have a lot of testosterone, for example, but you may not be converting it into the testosterone that you need, which is very interesting. And being a natural athlete, I need my testosterone to be as high as possible for as long as possible and like it wasn't and it wasn't converting and i was like ah damn so what it was turning to instead was cortisol so stress hormone so just putting a little bit too much stress on myself to get a whole bunch of work done or something like that and at that time at that period of time that i got it tested so it was very interesting to understand those things it was cool so let's make sure that now this shows up and reflects in my aura ring aura ring i'm gonna make sure that i'm doing everything every day and making sure that you know uh, my, my, my deep sleep is high and and um, you know it's very restful and my my heart rate variability is nice and high because that's going to reflect um, you know someone who's in a de-stressed state which means that my testosterone should be going up so good stuff wow this was fabulous I, I appreciate you uh, so much Corey and uh, uh, I am very appreciative to James Shramko who introduced us to each other and um, yeah I really enjoyed being on your show I'll include a link to that episode on your show on um, the yeah, show notes awesome. for this uh, episode as well and uh, yeah you're, you're you're just an exceptional guy <laughs> thank you Stephen and you are too thanks so much for having me on 
And yeah, it's always a pleasure to, to connect with you. Um, I think we always have like really good chats on and off the camera as well. And um, yeah, you're super inspiring and motivating and, and thank you for helping me out. Um, with some of the things that you have done beforehand as well. So yeah, big love to that. And yeah, man, thanks for having me on. Yeah. And now where would our listener or viewer go to learn more from you, uh, take your courses, maybe get coaching from you, uh, get the supplements uh, from the supplement company that you're a co-director of, all that. Yep. All right, cool. So essentially you can follow any of the social stuff on Instagram. It's just Corey Boutwell. You can also under, look at all my my podcasts. I've got one on like the cow ceremony, the fasting, optimizing yourself as well. A whole bunch of different myth and <laughs> mythological spiritual stuff in there too. And that's just Corey Boutwell podcast. If you type that into any podcast and engine, it'll come up or Corey Pot. Boutwell podcast on Google that'll come up as well. I have a website if you would like to get in contact with me at coreyboutwell.com or you can contact me on Instagram as well. And then uh, Turnham Labs is the company that I am a, a co-founder of and co-director of and we have a website at turnhamlabs.com which is spelled E-T-E-R-N-U-M Eternum which kind of means eternity um, eternumlabs.com which is really cool and if you're in Australia it's eternumlabs.com.au so yeah any of those you should be able to reach out see all of our stuff um, Eternum Labs has an Instagram as well so you can follow us on there and yeah we're just sharing all the good stuff and the good vibes and and everything that's really good. I also have, so if we're mentioning beforehand, I have a training course and a fasting course and I have like a high level coaching uh, thing that um, if people are interested in, they just have to message me. So. Awesome. Well, thank you, Corey. Yeah. And thank you listener and go out there and do something outstanding, do something for others, make the world a better place and take care of your body and soul. We'll catch you on the next episode. I'm your host, Stefan Spencer signing off. <laughs>